Welcome to Slam the Gavel, the show that tells it all regarding felony court, other court issues, as well as CPS. I am your host, Marianne Petrie. You can find me at dismantlingfamilycourtcorruption.com. My books are Dismantling Family Court Corruption, Why Taking the Kids Was Not Enough, followed by Cry Out for Justice, Poems of Truth, followed by Raised by These Wolves, How Family and Federal Courts Are Failing Our Children, followed by Raised by These Wolves, Volume 2, which came out July 19th as a bestseller. Raised by These Wolves, Volume 2, Child Trafficking Through the Foster Care and Court Systems. We all know what they're doing. Uh, please feel free to buy me a coffee to help keep this podcast going. You can find that in the podcast notes. I have returned guests. I'm happy to have Theo Chino back on my podcast. We're going to talk about family law stuff. And I was going to tell Theo, because he's. <laughs> we were talking earlier on the phone, we bought this brand new house. And we had to totally remodel the bathroom and it was hell getting a plumber here. It was complete hell. And um, so <laughs> we were talking Did about you, that. Did you say plumber? I said pl two, two, because one canceled. Then the other one came late. Interesting. Yeah. Did they do a good job? Well, apparently, you know, nothing's leaking. Mm. You know, so I'm curious, what would happen if, you know, like the Three Stooges, like Mo, Larry, and Curly came in to do a plumbing job on your house. And you know what happens when they do a plumbing job, right? Yeah. What would, what would happen afterwards? You know, your house is completely destroyed by water. What would happen next? I mean, what, what did you ask the plumber before you even let them in your house to work oh, on I, the plumbing in your house? Whenever I call anyone, a roofer, whoever, I always say, you know, are you bonded? Do you have insurance? Because you know what? I ain't paying no medical bills. <laughs> I've got enough of my own. You've got to be kidding me. Well, that reminds me of these people that call themselves family law practitioners. <laughs> right. Here I go. Go you know, for it. It's pretty funny because before I say anything else, I should say that I am not licensed to practice law, whatever that means. Because what I'm going to tell you is not good legal advice. In fact, there is no such thing. And if I were to give you legal advice and I were to tell you that I'm actually licensed to practice law and I gave you bad advice, hmm, you would think maybe I should be insured, kind of like a plumber would have insurance that would cover the devastation on your home. You kind of getting where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. Interesting, I, isn't it? Yeah. So you would trust someone with your children and your family you wouldn't ask them if they were licensed bonded and insured you wouldn't ask them hey if you give me the wrong advice and it ends up in catastrophe spiritually emotionally physically financially you name it you're going to your insurance is going to cover that right because you're licensed to practice law, right? Right. You're gonna make it all better. Is that is that how it works? I guess not. Yeah, I think everybody who comes into contact with these predators that do family law and their lackeys and the dummies who don't know that they're actually participating in a very well-oiled juice squeezing machine. Everybody that comes into contact with them, that should be the first interaction that they have with these people. What do you think? Oh, most definitely because the two screwballs I had totally messed up my case involving the child support. And had they had insurance, they could have been making the child support payments that they screwed up for me. I think that makes sense. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Well, what about this? I mean, so if I'm a plumber and I hit the wrong pipe and I forgot to shut off the water at least dramatically reduce the pressure and I flood your whole house and I ruin everything in your house. I mean, again, I think you have a claim against my insurance. So if I give you bad legal advice, like, oh, here's a good one. There was a parent who was recently told by their license to practice law, family law practitioner, that they were authorized to send the children across country trip through multiple states with a non-family member 
on their parenting time and they didn't need the other parent's permission. Now, well, oh, that's, think, that, yeah, go ahead. They're, that they're actually telling their client to commit a felony, which is custodial interference. What the hell? Right. And you know, well, wait a minute. I mean, maybe there's something in the in the divorce decree or the dissolution of marriage judgment or the allocation judgment from the judge that says that's okay. No, there's no such thing in there. And there's such a thing as right of first refusal, which is if one parent is not able to spend overnight with the children, that parent is supposed to advise the other parent, give them sufficient time to say yes or no before they leave the children with someone else. Mm -hmm. Yet, why would this person who is licensed to practice law, just like I practice jujitsu, and I'm very careful because I could hurt somebody very badly. Mm -hmm. I'm very careful. Why would they give advice that is so blatantly wrong? Because, well, wait a minute. Oh, I think I just figured it out. What's going to happen if this parent who is maybe not too wise to their ways actually takes their advice? What is going to happen to that attorney who gave the bad advice? Anything? Nothing. No. What? Wait, wait, wait. Marianne, you're telling me that a lawyer who gives bad advice will not be disciplined or disbarred? Oh, no, because when you file enough complaints, as I have, they always come back that they're just not unethical enough. Wow. But you know, it's funny. I went on like next door and I was asking people like, hey, do you have any good local referrals for lawyers? You know, real estate lawyers. Mm -hmm. criminal law, family law, which is basically criminal law, but different type of criminal law. And um, and any other types of lawyers, probate, um, wills and trusts. And they're like, just go on the, the local bar website. They'll give you lots of good referrals. <laughs> you know, I honestly, I tell people to look at their Google reviews, look at all the bad things people say about them. In fact, okay, I did a podcast on Sunday with Amy Palacios and I looked up the judge we were talking about. And then I got on Facebook and found him there. And someone wrote I, something to the fact that, you know, um, I can't believe you got in for another term. <laughs> All this, a couple of horrible things. Wow, it um, got through. Well, yeah, we'll get those. I, I got to... I got to tell you this because here, let me pull this up. This is funny. Um, okay. So one wrote, uh, this guy is just another embarrassment to his field. Enjoy your last term, Gary, because it will be your last. You had a mound of evidence in order to make a very logical decision and you blew it. Now a little boy under two years of age with special needs is as serious is at serious risk. You granted custody to a proven drunk drug abuser in custody of this boy. It blows me away that you could be this ignorant with all the turmoil in our country. And then um, that was about three years ago that someone wrote. Then someone else wrote, uh, they showed his picture and it said, this dude is a joke. Why are you all congratulating him? Question mark, question mark. For having a job? Question mark, question mark. Well, you know, it's funny, too, because there are when you talk about reviews for lawyers online, what's very interesting to look at is a lot of times they get their bar union. Some people might consider it a mob. They get their associates and buddies to write them reviews and they go, such a great lawyer to work with. And I'm like, and I'm like I bet, boy, it's like it's like criminals going Hey, that last heist we pulled off together was great. Lefty grabbed the jewels and Tony was the getaway guy. And boy, I can't wait to rob another place together. This They're giving each other five-star reviews. Mm -hmm. So going back to this license and bonded thing, from what I understand, there is a lawyer who shall remain nameless right now who doesn't like most of her colleagues. She floats around in the family law realm. And she said that about half of the attorneys in that realm don't carry malpractice insurance. I mean, why would you have to? No lawyer is going to help somebody sue another lawyer. 
I can, I still to this day have not been able to find mm-hmm. a lawyer who is willing to go after another law firm or another lawyer. Now, no. there's one tiny exception. There was a lady, and her first name's Colleen. She's in family law, and she's out in the county next to me. And she saw a blatant disregard of a client, um, a client's constitutional right to attorney-client privilege was trespassed and really violated on it violated severely and um she reached out to the law firm that employed the violator and helped a refund get sent back to the person whose attorney client privilege was violated it was just a consultation fee and it was from 5 years ago and um they got their money back now what's funny is the law firm tried to get this person whose attorney client privilege was violated to sign some sort of like non disclosure agreement. Mm-hmm. And Colleen was actually the one who was like, no, 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 no. My client will not, will sign no such thing. And the client was like, yeah, I'm not cool with this either. Like, are you paying me to shut up about this? Because if you are, it's going to cost a lot more than what I paid you in the consultation fee. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's called, hmm, what's the word for it again? Oh, yeah, bribery. Mm-hmm. Right? Hush so up like, money. Why you... Yeah. So hush money, right? So now we're talking about being licensed, insured, and bonded. Are judges bonded? Are they insured? Oh, I've... wait, they, they have immunity. Why would they need that, right? I've heard they have bonds, but no one can find them. People have found some of them. But a lot of them can't find their bonds. Maybe some of our listeners might know someone or get interested enough to look into this because this is very interesting because I've had I know two people personally that have reached out to various judges and said, are you licensed? And I'm sorry, are you bonded? Where is your bond? Because one person, his name's Michael Caruso out in Colorado. He came up with the conclusion that since the judge had to take an oath when he entered his office, and that oath simply stated that he would basically uphold the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. And then when he violated his constitutional rights, he basically broke his oath, and therefore his bond is kind of up for grabs at that point. And so he and this other person have asked judges repeatedly, where can I find your bond and gotten, they've received nothing but silence in return and weird looks. So maybe one of our listeners can do a little more digging in. We're still looking for this to see what's what, but the other part of it is now is like, okay, so now we have a group of people who are appointed most of the time in their jobs. Congratulations on being appointed by other people who are also appointed so we got a little club going here Mm -hmm. this is nothing constitutional there's nothing that even smells remotely legal anymore because you have people who are being appointed by others who were appointed and now they're they're violating people's constitutional rights so what do we have here this is a ring it's a mob i like to say that it's um piracy Mm -hmm. on the high seas on an old wooden ship known as the Sorry, do you have me back? I've got you back. It's always somebody trying to get a hold of me. Uh, so piracy I, I on the high say, seas. Piracy on the high seas on an old wooden ship known as the Domestic Relations Division. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think one of the first steps that people should do before walking onto that ship is ask for permission to come aboard. And they'll be like, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? It's like, no, no, I'm actually wondering before I step aboard, can I bring my constitutional rights with me? Mm-hmm. Or am I surrendering them when I walk in this room? And they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? It's like, no, I just want you to confirm that all of my constitutional rights will be completely intact and not trespassed upon while I walk onto this old wooden ship. Captain, Captain Bly. Yeah. 
<laughs> mutiny on the bounty. I mean, we are starting a mutiny, right? And it's, I'm sorry, it has to happen. Captain Bly's out of control. Yes. We're yeah. sick of it. Uh, right? Totally, totally. So now going back to this whole license and bonded thing, I, I'm going to call up various law firms and I'm going to, I don't know, like interview them because I want to know if I can get good legal representation from them. And I really don't care what kind of lawyer it is, but then I'll ask them right off the bat, hey, are you licensed to practice law in Illinois? Yeah. But could you explain how that happened? And then go further and say, now, are you insured? Yeah. By whom? Who, who carries your insurance? What? No, could I see that? Could I see that insurance certificate, please? Can you show that to me? Because if you'd said that to a plumber, guess what they do? Most of them would pull their pants up so you couldn't see their plumber's crack. Yeah. <laughs> and then they would show you their insurance or they'd walk away because they don't have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Watch what these entitled spoiled brats, this ring of criminals, whether they know it or not, they're part of a criminal ring. Okay. If one of them is committing criminal acts and they're all part of the same union and they all work together, they're part of a criminal ring. I mean, there have been, there are people rotting in prison right now because mm -hmm. they worked with someone that was a criminal. Right. And it's right. like, I didn't know. It's like, well, too bad. You should have. Mm -hmm. Right. Clink, clink. See ya. Say goodbye to your life. So they all work in this criminal ring and they will get mad. They get angry at you for asking. Can I see your insurance? Are you bonded? And then ask them the next question. So if you give me the wrong advice, what happens? Let's say the judge doesn't do what you're telling me. You know the judge is going to do because you still haven't got my retainer yet. Mm. Let's say you give me the wrong advice. Let's say you told me to wear the wrong color tie that day. The wrong length dress. Mm. You told me to wear my hair up instead of down and it set the judge off. And now I lost the most valuable thing anybody could ever have in this world, which is access to my children what are you going to do to compensate me for the spiritual emotional and financial devastation i will experience i love to hear that answer yeah crickets right crickets crickets so i mean i just wanted to wise everyone up and just say well wait a minute like i always say i'm not licensed to practice law whatever that means I tell them straight up. They're like, one guy goes, you're a lawyer, right? I said, what made you think that? Well, you really sound like you know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, I think then we know I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, well, I guess they do act like they know what they're talking about. So I guess I got, you know, we're on equal footing there, right? But he's like, it really makes sense what you say. I'm like, now you might really realize I'm not one of them. But then he goes, but you also said you're a member of the bar. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, and you also, I mean, you just know so much about this stuff. I'm like, didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so now I'm like licensed to practice law, whatever that means. Because why is everybody always saying, you know, when they, when you go to some government agency or the police or whoever, and you go, Hey, uh, you know, I, I see parents all the time. I haven't experienced this lovely episode yet, but parents saying they won't let the kids come out from my court ordered time. And then. The police, what did they tell you next? Civil matter. Can't get involved. Mm -hmm. You should probably call a lawyer. The second they say you should call a lawyer, that in itself, think about it, is legal advice. Oh, and yeah. you could probably sue the police for giving you bad legal advice to go get legal advice from a bar mob member. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty funny, right? I when mean, they, where's that going? Maybe nowhere, but it's comical, isn't it? And it, it makes is. you think. Well, plus, and there's been laws on the books for 40 years about custodial interference and how it's a felony. 
And even if the DA doesn't comply, they themselves could go to jail if they don't comply. But they, no one does. Who cares, right? Because it's just, a, it's just somebody else's kid. But when it's yours, it's a big deal, though. Well, correct. So now, you know, they, I've, I've had people say, you know, tell me, I'm sure you've had this too. Like, when are you just going to get over this? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And the next time somebody says that to me, what I'm going to do is if they have something in their hand, I'm going to snatch it out of their hand and wave it in their face and go, you know what? This is mine now. You can't have it anymore. This pen, this used to be yours, but I just took it from you. And you're never going to write with this pen again and laugh in their face. You know what? They'll tell their grandkids that story about how traumatized they were. And it's a stupid pen. Mm -hmm. You think about a bad plumber or a bad mechanic or a bad anything mm -hmm. ruining your stupid car or your stupid house. It's just a thing that can be replaced. You know what? That could get you pretty upset, couldn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, it could really alter the course of your life if you let it. And also, I mean, even if you're not letting it, it's going to really jam you up. And it's going to cause probably a not so good, memorable experience in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine when you get a scammer who claims that they can come and help you solve your family's problems. So last night, I sat next to a woman at... Rosati's Pizzeria, and she offered me a piece of pizza, and she was super nice, and she retired from family law. She couldn't take it anymore, and she goes, it was just terrible. She's like, I can't believe the horrible things that I watched my fellow lawyers do to these families, how I watched them laugh about how they were just robbing them blind while they were too crazy to think straight. So I'm going to leave you with this legal management services. I am not a lawyer. I am not giving you legal advice. I'm not licensed to practice law, whatever that means. But if you want to text me at 630-205-2466 and try not to trauma dump on me too much about how bad your ex is, because we all have exes that are this or that or weren't this or weren't that. What I want to talk to you about is... I, you know, I got to like, I got to do something about these people trying to call me when we're taking these things. But basically, I want to see those bills. Let's look at them together, see what we can do for you. And then you will realize that we're not just squawking about nothing. There have been like literal, there's been fraud and crimes committed against millions of people in this country. And we need to wise everyone up. It's not a big thing either. It's not going to, you're not going to have to stop everything you're doing in your life. Text me or find me on LinkedIn, Theo, Theodore Chino, and let's talk and let's look at those bills. Because if you think I'm crazy, you won't be the first person. You won't be the last. But when you talk to me about their bills, we can sit down and look at these things and talk about it. And you tell me after we're done looking at those bills, whether or not I'm totally crazy i definitely want you to look at my bills <laughs> let's do it cool well hey um don't jump off is there anything else you'd like to add first no uh other than hey you know what i don't push this on anybody but god's good and god's everywhere and god all of this will be over someday in a hundred years nobody's gonna remember any of this mess mm -hmm. but what we're doing right now i'm gonna quote gladiator Echoes into eternity. I think that's Gladiator. Oh, yeah. So, you know what? We can make a difference. And what else are you doing? Okay, live your life. Move on. Don't let this totally consume you. But you could turn this into a career if you feel passionate about what I'm talking about. Look at you, Marianne. You're doing it. And it doesn't have to be the only thing you do. But more parents need to stand up and fight because last I checked, Marianne, I was talking to Michael Caruso about this. I never, ever sat down and signed a piece of paper giving these judges in the family court in the domestic relations division 
um, superseding power over my power, over my family and my house. Mm -hmm. And I think if you went and you asked every American, they would always say no. And then they would always go, but if there's abuse, well, you know what, if there's abuse, you're telling me that somebody should not be allowed near the children. Yes. Well, then family court should definitely be, be dismantled five minutes ago. Yeah. Because read Marianne's books. Mm. Family court is abusive and it needs to be abolished. And they're like, what are we going to do without it? Well, guess what? We're still going to have problems, but we're not going to have the problem of the abuse of these unconstitutional courts full of appointed judges appointed by their buddies who have immunity and can literally get away with theft, fraud, why not throw in murder? I mean, it's practically oh, murder yes. at worst, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. I so agree. So that's my ten cents. Oh, great. Well, hey, don't jump off because I want to have you back on again. Okay, so hang on. Thank you. <laughs> Slam the gavels of podcast. Help the public understand what really goes on in these courtrooms. I am your host, Marianne Petrie, and you can find me on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google, and other platforms I don't even know about. Again, feel free to buy me a coffee. That will be in the podcast notes to help me keep this podcast going. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Theo. Thank you so much. Ciao for now.